The Geographic was never far from my mind. This is the first picture I ever had published in the magazine from a story about La Salle, the French explorer. We worked on Patagonian dinosaur hunters. These are dinosaur footprints in Patagonia. And then the third story I did was more what you would think is a National Geographic story. I skied around the Yukon Territory um, with scientists, and we were studying Nunataks, which are the rocky regions that pop through the glaciers. And we were doing a survey of the animal life on that. The assignments started to come more frequently. One year I did six assignments. This is from a story in Ashkelon in Israel. This is a story from the Battle of Trafalgar, and on, uh, these are sea scouts that are looking at a painting on the wall behind me. This is the first digital photo I ever had in the magazine. I worked on an impossible story to do. Uh, it was called, uh, you know, how old is it? It was how scientists date and age the universe. And I had a mathematician we talked to, and he calculated that a three-day-old baby is one one-hundred trillionth the age of the universe. So my brother-in-law is a OBGYN in New York. He hooked me up with somebody who just had a baby. I shot it on the third day, flew to California. We were out in the desert, and we were just trying to think of something that was illustrative that would make people stop and pay attention. I think my job, quite often, it's the opposite of a writer, you know. Uh, it's, they want you tearing through their words, and I, I want people to stop. I always want people to stop and just consider and pay attention to things. This is from the Shang Dynasty. These boys had collected river stones and were going off to build a wall. I remember this picture well because there's a building in the back, and I was standing at that gas station in the back, and I saw them drive by, and it's like, oh my gosh, that's such a good picture. So I took off running down the road. My driver was in the restroom, so I ran down the road and jumped on. You know, after a quarter mile or so, I jumped on the, the back of this tractor, and the guy driving the tractor didn't realize, the kids didn't realize, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I, I get the camera up, and I'm shooting pictures, and I'm like, this is great, the light's really pretty, and I had four frames on my camera. So I was like, ah, this is when I'm shooting film. So I just slowed down and made, uh, I made four pretty good frames. And uh, it was one of those situations that, uh, that I'm, I'm happy and lucky that I have this image. Worked on a story about Doggerland, uh, a land bridge uh, during one of the ice ages between the continent and England, where they it tied when this goes out, they can find footprints and artifacts. Uh, some of these places are finding amazing burials. When things get covered up by silt and water and things like that, that's actually, people would think that's what destroys things, but that keeps the microbes that are in the air away and things are more well preserved. I worked on a story on a tomb in uh, Peru called Warme Tomb. We sat there and, you know, they said, hey, there might be something here, and they completely uncovered it in front of us, and it was clutching that fabric. Uh, it was an amazing thing to see. There's small tattoos on the wrist, and this fix in, fits into a larger body of work that I'm doing. I've photographed about 60 or 70 mummies. 3D printing, a 3D printed gun. You know, we were technically trying to figure out how to capture a bullet. And it's really complicated because the strobes have to photograph it about one one millionth of a second to capture a bullet coming out. And, you know, there's no strobe conventionally that can do that. You'd have to go to MIT, uh, to the laboratory where Doc Edgerton invented the strobe. So we were going to do the best we could and uh, had these other strobes. And, and he fired the gun. This is the guy who 3D printed this gun. And it exploded. <laughs> so um, the bullet was slowed down because the barrel exploded. So this is the first picture I shot on that assignment. I was like looking at it on digital. I think, well, that, that works out pretty well. So <laughs> I'm uh, happy with that. I don't want to get near an exploding gun anyway. So and this was a, the, the most fun doing this one. This is a scanning electronic microscope picture that I shot of shark skin. And you can see the shape of the shark skin. And they built a swimsuit uh, based on that. And it was. Uh, the, the fastest times in the world were set using that suit, and ultimately the suit was uh, outlawed because they throw it in the water and it would just float, and you can't, you know, wear a flotation device. They decided, but in the meantime, I had an assistant who was a college swimmer, and he was like, "We should get uh, the fastest swimmer in the world to wear this." And I'm like, "Yeah." So he goes, "Oh, it's Gary Hall. He's in Florida. I know where he swims." So he called, and within half an hour, Gary Hall had said yes. So I was like. Really? So then it was to, time to figure out how to do it. So we did a lot of testing. We got there and tested. And before uh, we were being delayed through 
thunderstorms, and, and before Gary got in the water, um, we were doing some testing, and uh, this, this is me um, swimming. I, I showed Gary the picture, and I was trying to get it, you know, because in my mind's eye, it was like that. It was like, you know, really svelte. Uh, I said, what do you think? And he said, I think you should keep your hips up. So. <laughs> this is a, a chart of the Pythagorean theorem of light. I have no idea what it says or what it means. But uh, I had the opportunity to work for a photographer who didn't know what it meant. And I learned more in about a month from him than I'd learned in the entirety of my career. This is a picture I did for a story about bog bodies. And this is every picture I shot of this on this assignment. I think I made 87 lighting changes, and there's 87 pictures, and then that's the one we ended up publishing. Generally, in my work, I kind of stop when I'm happy, you know, lighting a situation, so I kind of stop when, when I think it's going to look as good as it's going to look. So these were hard mummies to photograph because they're basically shiny and black, so you had different choices on how you're going to do it. This is uh, one of the mummies. It's called the River of Tar. And that's the, the location where some of the, the bog bodies were found. In the bogs, they're finding all sorts of things. They're finding, you know, shoes and bog. That's a peat shovel, a peat bog shovel from uh, about 2,500 years ago. Each of these has an individual story. This is a 14-year-old female that they don't know why she was in the bogs. And this is the most famous. This is the Tolan man who... Uh, had the leather noose around his neck and uh, had a leather hat. You know, everybody talks about his peaceful gaze. And, and the tannin, the soil that he's in, is the thing that has made their, their bodies so dark. They, it's like tanning a saddle. Um, they absorb the chemistry, and it's also what makes their hair red.